Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here coming at you with another video for Infinite Lagrange. This video has been sponsored by NetEase and if you're worried about what that means for my content, do head to my Discord which is linked in the description down below. I have put a public statement out there. Right, that said and done, in today's video we're going to be looking at the Antonius Consortium Jaeger, one of the other new ships that was added as part of the Phase 2 servers. I've been able to get my hands on one of these and test it out quite thoroughly and I just wanted to talk about whether or not this ship is worth it. Spoiler alert, if you're only here for the short version, the answer is yes, it is worth it. But we're going to have a look at the ship itself, have a look at its stats, and why I think this is a really solid ship to add to any of your fleets. Now if you do enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Infinite Lagrange, ding that notification bell so you never miss an upload, and if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel and my content, please check out the links in the description down below, both to our Redbubble merchandise store and to the Patreon support page there, where you can pledge to support the channel and earn some really cool exclusive merch. Anyway, all that said and done then, let's have a look at the Antonius Consortium Jaeger. Now, the Jaeger is a cruiser that was added as part of Phase 2, um, and again, you find this in black market tech file boxes, um, and it doesn't appear to be too bad. I've seen quite a few people um, flying these recently. Now, there are numerous different types of it. Currently, I've only got the heavy aircraft cruiser auxiliary type, um, which is the first one, the sort of generic type that you get from your first blueprint, but I am absolutely enamored with this ship. Now, before we actually have a look at the ship itself, I just want to talk about how I've been using this. Because if I were to jump in to my base here, um, you'll see that currently in the Phase 2 server that we're in, I've been running themed fleets and actually been doing really quite well with these. So here is my consortium fleet. And if we actually have a look here, you'll see I've been running a couple of Predator aircraft cruisers and four Jaeger heavy aircraft cruisers in there as well. Alongside some Guardians, a Constantine the Great, um, a load of winged Hussar light missile destroyers, Destroyers, the area denial anti-aircraft destroyers, Karelian heavy cannons, and Reliat rapid torpedoes while I'm waiting to unlock some of the others. This has been um, a really good fleet, actually. I've, I've had a lot of fun flying this, and it has done remarkably well both in PvP and in city taking. Now, the Jaeger is definitely a key part of this, whereas the Predator, which is the other aircraft cruiser that you may have for Antonia's Consortium, that launches actual aircrafts in fighters. Um, and it's pretty useful, you know, it's 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 not a bad thing to have. I just didn't have any Antonius Consortium um, aircraft until recently when I got the, uh, the oh, I forget what they're called now, the, the Andersons. Um, and I've been enjoying those quite a bit, so I added a couple of Predators. But the Jaegers, on the other hand, these are absolute beasts. As far as these ships go, these are, it describes them as aircraft, but they're actually Corvette launchers. And that is the key difference here. These ships launch Corvette. And if we go back actually into the base and have a look into the fleet, you can see how I've got mine currently set up. So we go back into Consortium here, open up my Jaeger Heavy Aircraft Cruisers, and you'll see that all of these are running either four cellular, cellular defenders, or I've got a couple of them fitted with Nebula Chasers. Now watch as I struggle to find those ones. Should be the last one here then. There we are, four Nebula Chaser in that one there. Of course, Antonius Consortium um, Corvettes. Now, the great thing about the Jaeger, as I said, is that it launches four Corvettes. That in itself is really a key point that I want to get out of the door straight away here with the Jaeger. The Jaeger is 18 points and it carries four Corvettes. Before this, the only thing I had that really launched Corvettes was the AC721. Um, obviously, it's aircraft type there. Those are eight points each, and they only launch two Corvettes. So you're looking basically 16 points would launch four Corvettes um, as the destroyers. But they also tend to go down really like uh, really easily, and they don't actually do all that much for their Corvettes. The Jaeger, on the other hand, has an aircraft loading system with some absolutely monstrous abilities to it. So if we look at this here, for example, and we look at the different enhancements that you can put here on the aircraft loading system, the first one I went into was a prioritized target strategy. When the enemy fleet includes carriers, it deploys aircraft to attack these targets as a priority and reduces att attack duration by 35%. Now, because I'm going up against PvP fleets as we're coming toward the end of this Phase 2 server, and I'm doing a fair amount of city control and things like that, city capturing, um, 
uh, the carriers actually tend to be something I go up against fairly frequently. I've talked about this recently in the Kawawa video, um, where I talk about how I quite like the fact that that does an insane amount of damage um, for a destroyer. Yes, of course, but some people pointed out that, hang on a second, but don't uh, carriers have insane armor? And the Kawawa still needs to punch through those. Yes, they do. Um, but the Kawawa still actually manages to do that really quite nicely. Here with the Jaeger, the fact that your Corvettes can prioritize any carriers in the enemy fleet is an incredibly powerful tool because carriers normally sit right at the back and are pretty much ignored by everything. You kind of have to take out the entire fleet first, then hit the carriers. With a Jaeger, with this enhancement, that's not the case. And the Nebula Chaser um, is an absolutely fantastic fantastic corvette for uh, doing some really heavy damage to those enemy ships other than this though it's fairly standard fair reducing return to battle cooldown of aircraft and uh, uavs is just the aircraft here increasing the target lock-on speed and um, increasing the hit rate increasing the damage and increasing missile evasion that's a key one that i really like to put on these missiles do really really well against corvettes um, and so having your your corvette launching ship actually have a way to reduce the uh, the chances of being hit with um, those with those missiles works really really nicely. Beyond this, though, I will admit that the Jaeger itself is mildly disappointing in regards to its own combat systems. If we were to look at its integrated battery here, um, it's a generic cannon at the front here that is mainly shooting at corvettes, fighters, destroyers, and frigates, and an anti-ship cannon that again is destroyers, frigates, corvettes, and fighters, so you're not shooting anything particularly heavy. It does help a little bit, I guess, to have the whole thing of, oh, well, you know, if there are enemy aircraft around, this does help shoot them down a little bit. It's also cheap on the enhancements, but there's just really nothing overly exciting here. It's just typical hit rate, frigates and destroyers, fighters and corvettes, along with some weapon system cooldown and some cannon damage. And even if you fully skill into this, it's just it's it's not very high on the damage at all. Anti-ship, you're looking at a basic there, 3866, with 1652 on air defense and a paltry 273 on siege. The whole point of adding one of these to a fleet definitely is in order to add a whole load of corvettes that are going to fly off against your enemy carriers and rip them a new one. Other than that, the armor systems, yeah, it's typical Antonius Consortium. It gets somewhat decent HP, gets middling resistances and uh, uh, like physical resistance armor. It gets a little bit of energy resistance, and it does get the whole reducing crit damage, which is really quite useful. That's a nice one to go for, um, especially if you know your opponent's going to be using heavy crit things, um, like other missile systems and that kind of thing. That tends to be an Antonius Consortium sort of mainstay. Now, as I said, I'm currently running both the Nebula Chaser and the Cellular Defender, so it's worth, I think, like pausing and having a brief look at these. Now, the Cellular Defender alone is absolutely insane. I love this thing. It's got beautiful S rank there in anti-ship capability, and oh boy, it packs a punch. The Torpedo Attack System, this was the first thing I absolutely maxed out on this. Now, of course, we've got things like Hit Rate and that, but the main advantage I find here with the Cellular Defender is that the stats lie to you an awful lot. If you go for the weapon system crit damage and the crit chances and things like that, like I've gone for torpedo hit rate here and things like that, this does an insane amount of damage um, to enemy fleets. I've not worried too much here about the interception, uh, but when they hit, the amount of crit damage that these can do is absolutely massive. So that sort of 6,852 anti-ship that it's showing there is very misleading. That makes it look a lot weaker than it actually is. These things punch way above their rate. And of course then we've got the rapid fire battery system here as well. This again just gives it a little bit of sort of anti-aircraft support which is quite, you know, kind of nice. Um, but when it's going up against carriers, this is doing absolute slaps of damage against it. And it's the same then with the Nebula Chaser. The Nebula Chaser is kind of the other way around. It's not as heavy on its damage, but it's a bit sort of more... It, it can take a few more hits if it needs to. And again, as we look at the enhancements I've gone for here, these are definitely going for crit damage chance um, and the amount of damage that you can actually do with a crit as well. Now, there is here... Um, the option for the Nebula Chaser to prioritize enemy carriers, but obviously I don't need to go for that. I don't need to go for that because it's on the Jaeger, and the Jaeger is already prioritizing carriers instead. So off these will go um, and do some hefty, hefty damage against the carriers. Again, it looks a little bit lower, that's because I've not fully upgraded this one quite as high as the... Uh, 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 
as the other one. M name has completely gone from my brain there. We have a cellular defender, but it does do really, really well. And again, you'll find that if you have like a couple of Jaegers, or in my case, four Jaegers, two with cellular def defenders, two with nebula chasers, four in each, this thing sits quite comfortably there in our back row and it just launches these corvettes forward and utterly obliterates enemy carriers like look, look i'm not going to say they go down in seconds they don't the carriers they have a lot of armor a lot of defenses they do take a bit of time to go down but the fact that they are prioritizing those carriers means the carriers die a lot quicker than normally they would. You'd normally have to wait for the entire fleet to go first due to how target priority works, then end up shooting the carriers in the back, you know, the very back at the very end of it. Whereas having a Jaeger or four really helps get rid of those and thus mitigates a lot of the damage you'd be taking otherwise. As such, you can kind of consider this almost an anti-aircraft ship. If you know your opponent is going to be fielding a lot of aircraft rather than destroying the corvettes or the fighters or whatever you actually just destroy the carriers and deal with it that way i really like this ship it's got some cool you know it's it's an interesting sort of appearance to it as well very rigid typical antonius consortium when you see it in a fleet itself you can actually see the corvettes hanging off the bottom which is pretty cool um I really like it. I think it, hit, it it fills a really nice role in a fleet. They do a lot of damage in combat. Oh, crikey, that was a lot of uh, slowdown there. Um, but very cool ship, very powerful. And if you get one of these in a box, there they are with the, uh, the, the cellular defenders uh, docked at the front there. Um, if you manage to get one of these in a box, I wholeheartedly recommend building them, sending them out into combat, and just really watching your enemy carriers get ripped apart by whatever it is um, corvette-wise that you've got on there. There's the Nebula Chasers docked in there as well. Anyway, folks, that about covers everything here today that I wanted to talk to you about the Jaeger. If you are enjoying these sort of more in-depth looks at particular ships, do let me know. I'm quite enjoying just talking about individual ship and, uh, ships and what they do in the different fleets that I'm using them in. Um, but 100%, let me know if you've got a particular ship you'd like me to have a look at and sort of see if I can figure out. There are some unusual ones I've been playing around with a lot recently, um, notably things like the Mare Nubium. I'm still trying to figure out what on earth those ships are actually meant to do and how well they anti-aircraft versions work um but let me know if there's a particular one you want me to have a look at and i'll see what i can do please do remember to come join me on discord and whilst you're like joining different discords make sure you are in the infinite lagrange official discord as well as it is a great place to meet meet like-minded folks and have some really interesting conversations about how things are going with them what kind of fleet compositions you should be using etc anyway folks thank you for watching this one right the way to the end happy sailing and see you in infinite lagrange